What if at the end of your life you don't remember much of your life except for the hours you spent in front of the screen? Hi everyone and welcome to today's Flow of Thoughts video where we reflect on the things that provide you a sense of purpose and happiness as well as the things that keep you from achieving them. Perhaps you know the metaphor by John Strzelecki to picture your entire life as an exhibition. If not, grab a tea, make yourself comfortable and stay tuned. I'm Jonas, co-founder at FlowLab, where we discuss psychological science and flow states. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and leave a thumbs up. We appreciate your support. Also, if you'd like to try out our guided meditations, you'll find the download link to our app in the description below, as well as a discount code to get you 50% off the yearly subscription. We even have one called Legacy in the training area of Drive that is based on this metaphor I'm going to describe in a minute and that helps you reflect on the things you want to contribute in life. We all have those habits that we know don't really serve us, but we just can't seem to shake. Doom scrolling on our phones, binging trashy reality TV and seeking out short term pleasure at every turn. But here's the thing, those habits might give us a quick hit of dopamine but they're not doing us any favor in the long run. In fact, they're probably holding us back from achieving the things that really matter to us. John Strzelecki described in his book, The Big Five for Life, the metaphor of your personal museum. At the end of your long life, you walk through it and see every experience, person in your life, project, decision being exhibited there. So yes, there may also be an exhibit of that haircut you thought was a good idea at the time. But if you think about it, what do you want your life to be remembered for? What do you want to contribute to the world? Because as we all know, life is short. And I know it can be easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind, but you can use this time right now to take a step back and think about what truly matters. When you think about what your personal museum would look like, do you want to find yourself in a room of doom scrolling and trash TV, having spent hours and hours in there, mindlessly scrolling through feeds, binging one episode after another and losing track of time. In the end, these moments often get so blurred in retrospect anyway that we won't remember them anymore. How would you feel if you realized that most of the exhibits in your own personal museum are just replicas of each other? When they're all the same thing, over and over again, exhibit after exhibit of you staring at a screen, and I know I'm not telling you anything new, but it seems we still need to remind ourselves that there's more to life than what we see on the screen. Which exhibits would you find in your museum that show your passions and hobbies and the joy and fulfillment they brought to you? Perhaps you'd also see the activities where you found flow states, where you felt engaged, focused, fulfilled and inspired. Thinking about your current everyday life, how big or small would that room with these exhibits of your personal passions be? How much time did you spend in there relative to the room of endless feeds? Then there may be exhibits of the connections with others. Did you build more fair weather relationships or invested time and energy into building close intimate connections? How much did you nurture and cultivate these relationships? We're living every day only once, so let's make the most of it and live according to the things that are most important to us. Which kind of exhibits do you want to fill your museum with? Tell me in the comments below. And with this image of your personal museum, I say goodbye for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, it would mean a lot to me if you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Go get it and see you in the next video.